and then read. Mighty God of power, authority, our God. Let it be known today that you will change the bad for good. Let it be known today that our bad history can be turned into a good future. Let it be known today that the times that we've just gone through that are difficult are about to be turned into something good. We have no one else to speak good for us. You are the only one and that's why we praise you. I pray that Jesus, you may come and speak to us through your word. I pray that you may open our spiritual ears that we might hear you. Everyone following us right now, let them be blessed by you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The storm is not to kill you, but to give you glory. We are reading John 9. Then John 11, 4. Let's begin with John 9. One John 9 verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he might be born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. John 11 verse 1 to 4. Hariho umundu waruruwa yewit kwa galazaro wi betania. Ikiro nerochi wabo wa maria na marita mwenese. Mari uo niwe wasize umami yesa mafuta kubirenge. Akabiha naguza umusatiwe. Musaza uo ni lazaro wa undi waruruwa ye. Nukobashi kiwe batu makuri yesu bati data buja uu kunda araruwa ye. Murongo wakane. Yes, Abzum Vishe Aravogati, Yonwara, Sio Kumich, Ahogan Yoguhim Bari Shiman, Nogutumana Wimana Ahimas. Amen. Amen. Now, a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified through uh, them. So when Jesus walked with the disciples, they learned so much from him. In some of the teachings that Jesus taught them, Jesus taught them about life in general. The issues we encounter in life and the benefits that come from those lessons, the problems, the problems Satan will bring in our lives and how God has the power to turn it for our good. Every time, every time God will get something good out of something bad. Jesus was trying to teach us to take our eyes off of our problems. 
because every problem kigira urundi ruhande rw'inyungu every problem has a side of benefit ikibazo cyose every issue every trouble kigira igisubizo has a solution on the other side kandi igisubizo kiza ari umugisha and the solution will come as a blessing dero iyo tuvuga ngo imira bayubuzima so when we talk about the storms of life uko itwitura bikatuzaho when these storms surprise us and come upon us tunareba nanone uburyo muri yo miraba imana ikura mu ikuzo ikura mu icubahiro we also look at how God will glorify himself in our storms. There is a time Jesus was with the disciples in the ship and there was a storm and he chose to sleep. Jesus was sleeping in the boat. Yet there were storms everywhere. And the disciples come to him and say, Why are you not paying attention to this? We are dying, we are drowning. So I would like to say that when the storms come in our lives, they do not surprise him because he is with us in the storms. So we are not meant to be surprised by the storms. We shouldn't because he who is with us in the storms knows the storms. That's why you shouldn't allow yourself to give up and be exhausted because there is something else behind the storm. There is something bigger than yes, your eyes yeah, could see because Jesus is with us. So do not only look at the trouble, at the negative, at the bad things. Look at what is hidden. May Jesus open your eyes. Joseph did not pay attention to the betrayal of his brothers. Had they not betrayed him, they wouldn't find food in Egypt. So the storms of life that you're going through, please do not allow your eyes to only focus on the storms, but look at what is behind the storms. So I pray that through these teachings that God might help you to see, that your eyes might be able to see, that you may be delivered to see what is uncommon going on. The Bible has told us in John 9 that as Jesus was passing, he saw a man who was born blind. And the disciples asked him, so who sinned? Is it this man or his parents? So Jesus is passing by and he sees a blind man. He looks at the blind man. And the disciples notice that he has looked at the blind man. Then the disciples say, we have a question. So the disciples ask, we need to understand, did he sin? For him to be born blind, or is it the yes, parents? Jesus, why was he born blind? 
Niki chabite. Jesus, why could he? Why? Niki chato miyavu kari. Why was he born blind? To read. Jesus, tell us. Yes, we must be jamri komecha. And Jesus responded in a powerful statement. Yes, we are going to have a cause. Jesus said, neither this man, nor his parents sinned, but there is something behind it all. The works of God should be revealed in him. The works of God should be revealed in him. You must be born with a problem. Or you have encountered a problem in your life. Or you might be going through problems right now. And it's easy for people to condemn you. But they don't know why you're going through that problem. God is taking you somewhere. It was common, bizarre be sans omri Israeli, umuntu gushakisha impamvu yikinda afite. Ese ko ari impumyi ni wakoze bya cyangwa nababye niko bari bameze muri Israeli. Now we need to understand that it was so common in Israel for them to try to always understand every situation. So Ese no muri filosofia y'abanyafrika iyo bita filosofie bantu ta muntu upfa baramwicyo. This is similar to our philosophies in Africa, the Bantu philosophy. People don't just die. There is a reason behind their death. People are bewitched. They might have cancer, but we still think they are bewitched. They might suffer from diabetes, but we'll say they are bewitched. They might have a kidney problem. But in the Bantu philosophy, or African philosophy, our mindsets, we want to know who bewitched them. The doctor will prescribe medicine and tell them the disease. They diagnose it, but we look for the person behind the disease. This is what they say. So people want to come into your life and really understand what is behind your issue. This is the same with the disciples. They wanted to be involved in the details of his life. Jesus, tell us. Jesus, you know all. You understand all. Nothing will confuse you or pass you by. Jesus, you know all. Please tell us what's going on. Did he sin? Did the parents sin? That's how people are. They want to know why you are who you are. They want to know why you're not married. They they want to know why you have passed the age of marriage. Is there a problem? They, they want to know why you don't have a job. They want to know why you haven't bought your first house. And if you have a house, they want to know where you got the house. They want to know why you have been in Europe all this time and you don't have your car. And we have people who know why. In his family, in her family, they are sorcerers. We know them. There are people who know the reasons behind and they will say, we know their family, they can never prosper. So they trace your history, your family background. And then combine it to your present situation in Europe. And then say, there, there is no way he can prosper. We know their family. They can never prosper. We know the father used to be a sorcerer. He was known. He, people talk. 
And they want to analyze your life. They will investigate and others will explain the investigations of your life. But the difference and the good thing between the disciples and us today, they are going to ask the right person. Because it is Jesus who knows your life better than anybody else. Jesus knows how you were conceived and how you were born. Jesus knows what has happened in your life and what is happening in your life. Jesus can clearly and in details define every storm of your life. And Jesus also knows that in your storms there is good that is coming. Jesus understands well. He knows well that there is a place that you might reach and be a blessing to people though they have grouped you as a curse. Only Jesus knows this. Yes, Jesus knows you well. And when Jesus talks, he knows what he's talking about. In his statement, the first thing Jesus said, Jesus vindicated this man. He cleansed him in public. He says, Neither this man, he didn't. Oh. By saying this, the disciples become more compassionate because he didn't see. It. And this is what Jesus is going to do in this season. He's going to vindicate you and cleanse your life, cleanse your name in public. Jesus is going to vindicate you. Jesus is going to restore your reputation. Right now as I preach this message I see someone that they have tarnished your name, tarnished your reputation to the point you were afraid to leave the house but Jesus is restoring it. People never understood you but now they are about to understand you. People did not approve of you. But they are about to approve of you. Because Jesus is going to cleanse you. He's going to purify you and vindicate you before people. The second thing Jesus did, he vindicates the family. He said, The parents haven't sinned. The parents haven't sinned at all. So Jesus vindicates even the parents before people and the disciples. Jesus also vindicates the parents. He says, nor his parents sinned. So people might be saying the problems you have are related to your parents. So people judge you because of your family, because of your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters. They judge you. Maybe you are not yet married because of the reputation of your brothers. Your brothers are thieves and your parents are sorcerers or they are bad people. And you are judged according to your family. 
They do not judge you individually. They judge you from your background. They look at your family. God has told me to tell you. He's going to vindicate your family and cleanse it. He's restoring the reputation of your family. God is restoring you in the right way. God is going to do great things. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is going to cleanse your house. Your children. Your projects. Your work. Your dreams. Your vision. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Receive it in the Jesus name of Jesus. After cleansing his parents, the disciples asked, So, if it's not the parents, if it's not him, where did it come from? Jesus released the powerful statement. Jesus says, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. That the works of God should be revealed in him. In other words, where the work of God is, there is elevation, there is honor. The day God works, the earth was created. The day God works, the seas and the lakes parted. The day God works, there was light. The day God works, trees were planted. The day God worked, animals were created. The day God worked, man was created. The day God worked, all good things covered the earth. Every work of God adds something. And everything God has done, it is precious, it is beautiful, it is glorious. When the Bible says the works of God should be revealed in him, it means there is value, there is glory about to be added. The works of God are going to be revealed in your life. And the works of God don't just show up. They come with the glory of God. Because God moves in glory, they come in glory. When God works, people see the glory. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalms 19, that the heavens show his glory. All that was created shows his glory. All that is in the earth will declare his glory. Your problems are about to declare the glory of God. God is going to do works that will restore honor to you. Going to be honored in your family. I prophesy for your life right now God is going to add you life days to live that you may be profitable to people God is going to restore his glory in your life there are works of God that are about to be manifested and people will say we have seen God they will say, we have seen God. Where there was darkness. Where they saw prostitution. Where they saw drunkenness. Where they saw adultery and fornication. Where they saw exhaustion. Where they saw alcohol. Where they saw smoke. Where they saw failure. Where they saw fear. Where they saw giving up. 
Where they saw weakness. Where they saw you not advancing. Where they saw a curse. Where there was no favor. Where they saw foolishness. Where they saw illiteracy. They are about to see the hand of God. In the name of Jesus. God is going to work. God is taking you to the potter's house. And then he will mold you. And then he will mold you. And then he will mold you. And, will mold you and change your shape. Into a vessel of honor. When people see you. They will say we see. We see. The works of God in his life. The works of God in my life. There are works of God in your life. And I'm telling you right now. The works of God are going to be manifested in your life. I tell you right now. The power of God is going to be manifested in your life. I'm telling you. The glory of God is going to be manifested in you. Jesus is saying. The blindness. That is in your life. Came for his glory. God is saying. The problems you have. Came in your life. That you may see how God works. The problems you have. Came in your life. That people might see. That God doesn't change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us about Lazarus. John 11. Now there was a certain man called Lazarus. Lazarus of Bethany. In his neighbor, in the, com in the community of Mary and Martha, those were his sisters. In Bethany, there was a man who was sick. In this house, there was a sick man. In that world, there is a sick man. In your friends, one of them is sick. Someone is going through problems. In your family. There is someone going through the storms of life. In your community. Someone is going through the storms of life. But I have good news. I have good news. The storm is not to kill. The storm is for glory. It will not kill you. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The storm is not for death. The storm is for glory. We thank you, Jesus. Mary. Mary. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Mary had done something. She had anointed Jesus with oil. And then took her hair and wiped, wiped his feet. Jesus knew her. Jesus knew her. Jesus knew her family. And he became their friend, started visiting. Because one of the siblings anointed him. The prayers you made. There is a word you received. There are promises you received. There are offerings you gave. There is a tithe you paid. There is a sacrifice you made that made Jesus know you. And Jesus knew your family that you're good people. This Lazarus who was sick, the same Lazarus who was the brother of Mary, the Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil at, her, at his feet, and wiped the oil with her hair. You know feet are dirty. 
and hair is well kept. Hair is always well kept. So taking well kept hair and cleanse feet that are dirty that have walked the whole day. It was a great level of submission and acceptance of the Lord. The works you have done are the works that have truly humbled you. But today, Jesus knows you. Today, Jesus knows you. And Jesus understands you well. Listen, Lazarus. Lazarus was the brother of Mary. The Mary, the Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet. This same Mary was a sister to Martha. Then their brother Lazarus fell sick. When their brother fell sick, they could see he was about to die. They were shaken. They were worried. It is probable Marita, that Martha, Maria, Mary, Lazarus, Lazarus were orphans. They didn't have a father and they didn't have a mother. They were orphans who lived by themselves. Besides the death of the parents, they didn't live in the city. They didn't live in Jerusalem. They lived in the village in Bethany. In Bethany. They lived in Bethany. Despite their situation, they loved Jesus. Despite them being offered, they took the little money they had left, they bought fragrant oil, and they anointed the feet of Jesus. So you being an orphan, you being a widow, you being poor, did not stop you from serving Jesus. You did well like Mary. And Jesus is telling you, the storm is not to kill you. But God will get glory out of the storm. Amen. When their brother was sick, they lost hope. We have lost our father. We don't have our mother. We are about to lose our brother? Maybe the disease that Lazarus had was similar to the disease that killed their father. Maybe the disease that he had was similar to the disease that killed the mother. Because they saw how sick he was. And quickly understood that if Jesus doesn't come, Lazarus will die. So they sent people to him. They wrote. They wrote. They sent a messenger. The messenger went to Jesus. Like your prayers. The, the letters you write to Jesus. The request you give the servants of God to pray for. When you tell servants of God to pray for. The request you give. They sent requests to Jesus. They wrote a short sentence. They sent a short sentence. Do you know what they said? They said, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. 
Lord. Behold, he whom you love is sick. Bamibutsako akunda Lazaro kandi akunda umuryango wabo ndetse nabo haruko bamwiyeretse ko mukunda So they remind Jesus that he loves the family he loves Lazarus he loves them Yes abzumvise abatumaho nawe And when Jesus heard of it he sent a response Arabwira ngo iyo ndwara siyo kumwica He says the sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. When Jesus closed, Jesus loved Martha. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. That is enough. He says the sickness is not Let me tell you. The problems you have are not for your death. Or the curses, they will not finish you. Those who frighten you will not end your life. And that poverty is not a generational trend. The disease is not for your death. The unemployment will not kill you. No. No. Listen to what God is saying. As I'm telling you in England, or you are in Europe, or you are in Africa, or you are in the United States, or you are in Australia, or you are in New Zealand, or in South Africa, if you're following from Brazil, I boldly tell you, the disease will not kill you. The storm is not for your death. But for glory, there are two people who will benefit from it. God will be glorified. Jesus will be glorified. Your life will change. And God will reveal his glory. Your problems will be a donkey that Jesus walks on coming to you on the donkey of problems and people will know he is God you are going to be a lesson for many you are going to be a lesson for so many people people will see how God works through your life I prophesy right now that your life will never be the same again the glory of God will be manifested in your life the glory will come upon your life you who is sick the disease depart I rebuke the problem. I said that the glory will be revealed. Let it happen in your life. In the name of Jesus. As I speak, touch where you're sick. Touch your back. Touch your head. Wherever you feel uncomfortable. I prophesy right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke the disease. I rebuke the problem. Let a new beginning come in your life. Let a new beginning come. Let the fire of God come upon you. The Pentecostal fire come upon you. And cover the sin. And burn the problems. And burn the death. And burn the cancer. And burn the tuberculosis. And burn the ulcers. The, the arthritis. The diabetes. The kidney problems. Liver problems. Kidneys. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the glory of God come upon you. Let the work of God be manifested in the land. Where you don't walk, arise, arise from your bed. In the name of Jesus. In the name 
of Jesus, we command you in the name of Jesus, the works of God, let them be revealed in your life, let God be praised, let Jesus be praised, in your life, in this moment, the past is gone. The glory of God. God is lifting you up. God is lifting you up. The past is gone. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There are works of God that are going to be revealed in your academics. At school, there are works of God that are about to be revealed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May the works of God be revealed in your life. In this moment, all oh, the curses that were upon your life, all oh, the generational curses in your family. We call upon the glory of God to burn them. Let the works of God work in the curses. In the name of Jesus. In this moment. The tumor you have in your spirit. Let it come out in this moment. Let the works of God be revealed. Let the works of God be revealed. In your whole life. When God arises in your life. You arise. God is glorified in your life. And you will be glorified. Peter and John said. Silver and gold we do not have. What we have we give you arise and walk. He who was crippled arose and went praising God. Arise in this moment in the name of Jesus and walk. 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 Come from your bed. If you're listening to me, walk. Start walking. Start walking. Let fire come in your limbs. Let, your, let the fire come in your limbs. Let fire come in your chest. Let your veins walk. Wherever you couldn't feel anything, be well. In the name of Jesus, start walking. Start walking. Use the hand that couldn't move. Stretch your hand. Stretch slowly. Stretch slowly. Stretch slowly. Stretch your fingers. Stretch your fingers. Raise your fingers. Feel your fingers. In the name of Jesus. 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 As your shoulders grow. Start standing upright. Upright. Stand upright. Stand upright. Stand upright. In the name of Jesus. The works of God are being manifested in your life right now. That problem is your solution now. What a testimony. What a testimony. What a testimony. Jesus. Yes. Yes. The problem with your eyes. Let your eyes be well. Let your eyes be healed. Let your eyes be well. If you have a hearing problem. In the name of Jesus. Let your ears open. Be opened. Be opened. Thank you again. Make a, make a sound by your ears. Make a sound by your ears. What do you hear? What do you hear? Your ears. Let your ears hear. Because the works of God are being revealed. In you. The works of God are being revealed in you. Every organ that is 
disabled in your life. Let the fire of God come upon Let the fire of God come upon it. The bleeding and seasoning. The flow of blood. Let it stop in the name of Jesus. Let it stop in the name of Jesus. Right now, the blood has stopped. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. I see Jesus doing great things. His works are causing God to praise. To be praised. God is being praised. Christ is being praised. Glorified. He's being glorified. Because of his works working in you. You are going to forget who you are. Because you are going to look at Jesus only. You are going to think of Jesus only. Let your spiritual gifts arise. All the gifts that were asleep, them work. Let them work. Let them work. Let your spiritual gifts work. Your gift, your gift to dream, let it arise and work. Your gift to dream. Your gift to receive a vision. Let it come back in the name of Jesus. Your gift to sing. May God give you songs again. May you sing again. May God restore the spirit of worship in this moment. In this moment, be restored. Let the works of God work in you. Be restored. Be restored. Be restored. Jesus. Be restored in your life. Be restored in your life. Be restored in your life. The disease is not for your death. The problem will not kill you. But it is for the glory of God. For the glory of the child of God. Let your life to praise. Begin to sing. I see, I see a new song coming in your life. I see a new melody coming in your life. May the power of God come in you. May the power of God come in you. May the glory of God come in you. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you praise. I want you to believe this. I want you to have faith. I want you to believe this, my brother, my sister. Jesus told the disciples that Lazarus was dead. He didn't say he was dead. He said he was asleep. So the disciples wondered, will he ever wake up? And they said, they almost killed us. Let's not go back to where he is. <laughs> Jesus said something powerful. John 11:15, he says. John 115 John 11, and I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Now I am glad for your sakes 
that I was not there. Yes, we are the children who got tired of our lives. I hope we so Jesus was happy that he wasn't there when Lazarus was sick, but he's going to go there when he's dead. Yes, Jesus is pleased that Lazarus is dead. He didn't go when he was still sick. He says that I'm glad for your sex that I was not there. Verse 21, now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Lord, had you been here, he wouldn't have died. But Jesus had told the disciples, I am so glad that I wasn't there when Lazarus was there. So let us go that I may do what is beyond that you might believe. Do you know that Jesus didn't come to solve your problem when it was still small? He waited for it to be big, for it to rot, so that when he solves it, it will be great praise. It will yield great faith in your life. Yes, I want to go to Kanubu Ging, Uni Zera, now we have a few years ago. Yes, I get to go to Ging, moving to the website of Zanira. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Uzabaho. You will. Yes, Nubu Ging. Yes, Sunim Barak. Jesus is power. Yes, Nubu Ash. Jesus is authority. He says, the storms are not for your death, but for glory. Do you know what people are saying? They say what is different. Verse 31. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her saying, she's going to the tomb to weep there. So they were coming to help Mary. They were not there to solve the problem. People will help you. But they will not deal with the cause of your problem. So when she had Jesus, Maria come, she rose quickly. Those who had come to mourn her, they ran behind her, thinking she's going to the tomb. But she was going to the Lord. When she saw him, she fell down at his feet. He fell at his feet. Do you know the last time she was at his feet? When she was anointing him. When she was wiping his feet with her hair. <laughs> Today she's not coming to wipe his feet. She's coming to cry at his feet, saying, Lord, if, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. This is what she tells me, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. This is powerful. The first time she was at his feet, she anointed his feet and she wiped his feet with her hair. Today, she's at his feet telling him these are the problems we have. I want to ask you in this moment 
that we may humble ourselves and show him the storms we have in this moment. People started saying, Verse 37. And they say, and some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man? They didn't expect him to resurrect a dead man, but at least he could heal. Him. But Jesus said, take away the stone. He called Lazarus. Lazarus, Lazarus came out. I ask you to remove the stone. Let us call. What you missed in life. To come. Pray with you. If you haven't received Christ, receive him. Repeat, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I receive you. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. Take out all sin. Let me be your child. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for blessing me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go to the Look for a church near you, wherever you might be, a church that teaches the word of God. It might be Zion or any nearby church, and go there and grow in the Lord. Lord Jesus, open the tomb that the glory might be that these people might see us God as a king and as a miracle worker. Let everyone receive their miracles in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Receive the miracle. Be set free today and for eternity. Amen. Amen.